So we had two cool questions come in recently, and I can solve both of the questions with one simple answer. So ready for this? We're going to talk about negative peaks. It shouldn't happen, but it does every once in a while. And we're going to talk about baseline drift in HPLC. So both of those should be a fairly minor thing. Uh, baselines in HPLC shouldn't drift very much because when we do gradients, both mobile phases don't absorb anything. So we should really have no major baseline drift in the HPLC world, uh, unless you got refractive index. You're doing refractive index, well, that's just part of your life. You just get used to it. Uh, but in HPLC UV detection, we don't get too much drift. And at the same time, we really generally don't get negative peaks. So let me deal first with the negative peak concept. So if you look in troubleshooting books, they will not help you at all. They will lead you astray because if you look at any book that talks about troubleshooting LC and if you look up negative peaks, it'll say that your analyte is absorbing less than your mobile phase, which is totally impossible. First of all, your mobile phase should absorb zero and anything you're looking at can absorb less than zero unless it's like fluorescing or something like that. So uh, the bottom line is we should not get a negative peak due to uh, the absorbance. The reason we get a negative peak is because, and it's a little bit of a complicated answer, but if you have a diode array detector, it's common to use what's called a reference wavelength. In fact, by default, the reference wavelength is turned on. It's set to 360 nanometers plus or minus 100 or plus or minus 50. Um, and that is the standard setting for, uh, for most diode array detectors for what's called their reference wavelength. Now, reference wavelength is literally a subtraction wavelength. So most compounds absorb um, at 254, if it has a benzene ring, 220, if it's got an acid group, 280, if it's a protein, but most things are down there below 300. So what we tell the software to do is, why don't you subtract everything up there at 360, whatever you find up at 360, subtract it from my signal at 254. Now, what are we gonna find up there? Well, hopefully nothing, but any kind of noise, whether it's lamp noise or refractive index noise, that's equivalent pretty much across all wavelengths. So here's a cool concept. We're gonna go to some high wavelength where my analytes do not absorb, and we're gonna subtract that, which is noise, from where my analytes do absorb. And I get slightly better signal to noise ratio, slightly better sensitivity, and that's the name of the game. That's why we do that. But now, let's say you have a compound that actually absorbs at 360 nanometers. So I get this call about once a year from somebody and they say, we're getting negative peaks. It doesn't make sense. Now, first statement, if you get a negative peak at the beginning of the chromatogram, that's T0, that's totally normal. If you're doing refractive index, you get a negative peak, well, that's refractive index, deal with it. But if you're doing UV detection like most of us are, you should never see a negative peak. So when you do, it's usually because your compound is a colored compound. If your compound is bright red, orange, purple, green, it means it's absorbing up in the visible, which means it probably has a lot more absorption at 360 than it does at 254. So you're actually creating a negative peak by subtracting more than your compound is absorbing. So let me show you in the software a real simple way to fix that. And that is in the diode array. When you set up the diode array, it seems complicated. It's really not that bad. We tell it what sample wavelength we want. At 254 nanometers, by far the most popular wavelength. It's good for benzene rings. Um, it's also, back in the 1970s, it was our only wavelength, which is why 254 is still popular. So 254, bandwidth of 20, which means I'm looking at everything from 244 to 264, sort of adding all those diodes together, averaging them, getting a really good, nice high signal, very low noise. Now, by default, I'm gonna subtract everything up here at 360. So why is it such a big bandwidth? Well, I don't wanna sort of subtract any one peak or band. I just wanna absorb any kind of, I just wanna uh, uh, subtract any noise. So easy answer. If you're getting negative peaks later on in your chromatogram, probably because you have brightly colored compounds, simply shut off the reference wavelength. By shutting it off, the problem goes away. Um, now, a lot of people wonder, well, wait a minute, why did I have it on to begin with? Well, most of us should leave it on. It gives us slightly better sensitivity. Now, I don't know the exact numbers, but if your detection is one PPM, that'll take it down to, you know, 0.7 PPM, which is fantastic if you're doing trace analysis, but if you're not doing trace analysis, um, it's not nearly as important. And more importantly, if you're getting negative peaks, get rid of that stuff. So shut off the reference wavelength, negative peaks go away. Okay, now the second part of the question, or actually the second question that I'm gonna answer with the same, same answer, and that is drifting baselines. Like I said, we don't usually see drifting baselines in HPLC, but the little drift we get is usually due to the refractive index change from the initial mobile phase to the final mobile phase. 
since refractive index effects are equivalent across all wavelengths, all we got to do is turn on the reference wavelength. So if you're getting baseline drift, um, if your baseline is going up or down during a gradient run, then most likely uh, that means you have not turned on your reference wavelength. In that case, simply go in and turn it back on. Um, that you, again, you'll find that in your detector screen uh, and the reference turn it back on. Uh, this, the default reference is 360 with a bandwidth of 100. And uh, you could just leave it at that. Now, if you have a situation where you're getting negative peaks, and like I said, just shut off the reference wavelength, it'll solve all your problems. If you really want the correct answer, you need to move the reference wavelength to some place where your compounds do not absorb. I would take the first approach. I would just shut it off because you don't lose much sensitivity, but you'll certainly correct those negative uh, baseline peaks. So hopefully I've helped you out with that one. Uh, it's a little bit of a complicated answer, but hopefully you, uh, you, uh, you uh, stayed with it. If you have other questions or want to see other demonstrations, Put a comment in the comment section and we're uh, happy to take requests.